circumstance, no problem, no nothing can separate me from his love. He loved me so much, he loved you so much, that he gave his only begotten son. Glory to God. He died, he was buried, and he resurrected for you and for me. Glory to your name. I don't know what more you need. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes in this life, we are given good friends, sometimes. But you know what? There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. And I don't know why they even sang that song lowly, because he is high and lifted up. Amen? We give God's name praise. We give him glory. We give him honor. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Germantown Church of the Brethren here at 6611 Germantown Avenue, where the pastor is Pastor Richard Cherry Martin. Amen? We just bless the Lord. I'm excited. I don't know about you. I'm not going to pump you up. This is the day that we are commemorating that Jesus Christ got up out of the grave. Hallelujah. For you and for me, I'm not pumping anybody up. If you're not up, that's too bad. Just the thought of that gives me, sends me into overdrive. I am excited today. I am so excited. I love the Lord. You know why? Because he first loved me. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And just allow the Spirit of God to have his way with us today. Amen. The praise team is going to come now and just bless us in their own way. Hallelujah. Minister Kadada, Minister Anita. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it on this Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. We have so much to be thankful for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship, worship, worship. It empties us out. Everything that we've been dealing with this week and today, it empties, it empties us out and it allows space for the Lord to enter. Hallelujah. Will you worship with him to, with us today? All right, the first song we're going to sing is He's Alive. If you're able to stand and sing with us, hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior who is alive. Hallelujah! Put your hands together. He shall reign, he's alive. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive.
Yeah. 
Yeah. 
hallelujah, hallelujah. Here in the power of Christ we stand, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. Here in the power of Christ we stand, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we have a selection um, that we'll do at this time, and then we will hear from our pastor. King of Kings is the selection. Hallelujah. In the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Reconcile the loss to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross for even in your suffering. You saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation. Jesus, for our sake, you died.
Worship team, Minister Kidada and Minister Anita, just to stay for one quick second as I shift your attention from the power of the music and the beauty of their voices to the lyrics. Can I get a witness? Because sometimes we hear with different parts of our bodies when it comes to worship. But we ought to always go beyond how our bodies are affected by really listening to the heart Amen. and the spirit of whoever wrote the song. Yes. Can I get a witness? And that song, as they sang as a selection, Minister Kidada, is titled King of Kings. Yeah. And I've heard it many times, but this time when I Googled it, it's really a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. It tells the gospel yes. mm -hmm. in a few mm -hmm. stanzas. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And for those of us who like to talk, when we have people that put things together like this, it's helpful. Yes. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. And so if it's okay, if I can just repeat without singing. Mm -hmm. It says that in the darkness, yes. we were waiting uh -huh. without hope. Yes. Until from heaven, you came. Running. Uh-oh. Thank God I can't sing. Because if I could sing, like I told you all, I would come to church myself. Doesn't matter what anybody is showing us. The Bible says we're two or three. I got that. I'll find me somebody from the street and come into the house of God. And we would have what? A worship service. But, 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 but the songwriter says that till from heaven you came running. In the fullness of time, yeah. 
word of God said that God sent forth his son in the fullness of time. Oh, I wish I had a witness. From wherever you want to believe, the world started. But the Bible says that in the fullness of time, God sent forth what? His son. I know, I know I'm going to preach a little bit today. But, but how many of you know the world has no problem with, eat, with Christmas? We, we all love babies, right? Babies are not threatened except that these days babies are dangerous. Because I know they, babies know a whole lot of stuff that they can't say yet. But the way things are going very soon, amen, they, they might start talking. Amen. We have one in the house. I, I can tell you that that baby knows everything that's going on. Comes in excited. Yeah. And when service is over, she shuts it down. Goes to sleep. <laughs> I've been watching her. Hey, Amen. Uh, 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 the world has no problem with Christmas. Mm -hmm. They love uh, baby Jesus. Come on, somebody. Because baby Jesus can't talk back. Mm -hmm. Baby Jesus can't harm anybody. In fact, baby Jesus is just adorable. Y'all see all these young mothers with babies. Amen. <laughs> They, they just think they are toys, amen? Till the babies start giving them problems, then all of a sudden, I know, and I got to behave myself. It's Easter Sunday. The world has no problem with a wounded Christ. I'm trying to tell the story of the gospel. We are wounded, right? So Christ died on the cross. Uh, you don't have to be a Christian to sympathize with a wounded Christ. Can I get a witness? Oh, y'all did it. I'm taking it somewhere. Amen. In fact, in fact, the world can cry for a wounded Christ. That's why they have no problem with Good Friday. Can I get a witness? Oh, but when you start talking about a resurrected Christ, oh, the world is in trouble. Can I get a witness? If it had all ended in the tomb, can I get a witness? It was okay. The world will still celebrate Good Friday and, and talk about a Christ who died. But I come to rem let me let me leave that for preaching. The world has no problem with a wounded Christ, but the world has a problem with a resurrected Christ. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. As the believers, it is time for us not to proclaim a wounded Christ, but to proclaim. A resurrected Christ. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Amen. We know Easter is a tradition that is not really biblical. Y'all better talk back to me. But pastor, then why do you celebrate Easter? Just like I celebrate Christmas, I celebrate Easter because it gives me an opportunity to let the world know that there was a day in the history of this world when the baby Christ, amen, grew up, amen, and was crucified on the cross. But on the third day, he rose up victoriously. You better put those hands together and give God some praise. I make no apology every day talking about the resurrected Christ because the Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that we have the same power that raised up Christ from the grave. It's the same power that lives in us. And so brothers and sisters, we don't have to wait till, 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 till Easter, whatever day it falls on. Whole lot of folks are convinced, confused because sometimes it falls in April, sometimes it falls in March. I don't even know. All I do is I just check my phone. Yeah. Yeah. And then I join the world in celebrating Easter. Yeah. This morning I'm excited. Yeah. Pastor Barbara, I've started picking up some of your phrases. Yeah. I'm excited always. Amen. Because I'm, I'm, I'm rambunctious. I'm loud. I, I like, let me leave it alone. But I've learned from Pastor Barbara the excitement yeah. of, our, of the Lord with you. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And this morning as I saw a few of you at Carmen early, I said, Lord, thank you for these things. Yeah. Let me say this to you as pastor of this church. I've been here for a long time, but this is the first time that everybody who is seated in this room, I believe that I have pastoral what? Authority over them. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. This church has been used by God. Or there are many people who trace their blessing from this church. But I'm saying the last couple of months, mm -hmm. and especially today, mm -hmm. for almost about 80% of you all, I have 
No doubt in my mind, when I say I have pastoral authority, what I mean is, I know that God placed you in my life. And God placed me in your life for a purpose. It was naturally, I don't want to be bothered. Was naturally, I want to be like a Baptist preacher who wants to what? Retire at the age of what? Whatever my age is. But as the Lord just when I was just about to put in my, res- my retirement, you gave me an assignment. And that assignment is to help you to fulfill your ministry. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said, my assignment is to help you to fulfill your ministry as you have helped me to fulfill my ministry, especially in this season. How many of you know that God is a good God? Let me say another thing, and, and I know they're tired, but I'm going to get back to the words of the song. I'm the one preaching today, so, so you know me, I'm a live preacher. So you better start receiving. Amen. It's a, it's a trick from the enemy that you got to wait till the bishop comes up, and then they sing a selection for him or her. And then he or she, amen, hoops and do whatever and throws out a sermon. Come on, somebody. And sometimes some people have already tuned out the preacher. Before the sermon comes up. So I'm preaching. Amen. I'm preaching. Amen. I don't have a title, but I'm preaching. Okay. So we're past to get it in context. So those of you watching this service live, you may just have tune in. You may tune in later on. Let me just put it in context for you. This song is Song King of Kings. Uh, put, a, put, put the words back. And I was saying that that song touched my heart. It just capsulizes for me. The whole story of what? Of the gospel. Christ was born. Christ was crucified. Christ was raised up. What is the fourth act? What is the fourth act in the drama? He's coming back. Can I get a witness? And so unlike the world, when we celebrate Christmas, our minds go to what? To the cross. And when we celebrate the cross, our mind goes back to resurrection and when we celebrate each our minds go back to what the ascension for after everything was said and done the angels stood by and told them and said this same jesus whom you've seen being what sent back to his father is coming back you the world will not teach you that but we have to teach ourselves and that's what separates us from the world in the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes i know it's all excitement you know minister james came up looking sharp you know uh y'all see me have a little you know new coat on you know uh I, you know, everybody, I, I, just, I just dressed up on Easter Sunday because when I was growing up, that was when I got new clothes, amen. So, so y'all got to bear with me if, if, if my colors are too bright, amen, amen. But, 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 but this morning, I, I'm not just into the clothes, I'm into the mercy. Come on, somebody, amen. I, I'm excited, uh, I, I'm ready for some good food, but, but, but my excitement is what? Is in the mercy that is in the Lord's eyes. Just, just give me the next stanza. Give me something to work with. As I give uh, Pastor Barra to come and lead us in a little prayer. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Christmas story all over again. Give me the next stanza very quickly. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the king of kings. Uh, give me something else to work with. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross. You got to remember that stanza because I'm going to be preaching a little bit on redemption. Amen. But you, you got to remember that. G- g- give me another stanza. Give me another, another th- yeah. for even in your suffering you saw to the other side. How many of you know Easter is about suffering? But it's about seeing the other side of suffering. For in 
what Christ did, we have hope. Come on, somebody. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. Amen. I was at a, a memorial service, homecoming service for Brother Hill yesterday. And uh, 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 Minister Renee, uh, there are preachers who are taking after you. Uh, he, he was a poet preaching in the pulpit. Amen. Uh, and he said, y'all see the drama on Good Friday, right? Now, how many of you were here last Sunday? Apostle threw a bombshell. Amen. He preached on what? I, I gave him a new title. The trauma, the tragedy, and the triumph of Good Friday. I want you to write that down because that's a book I'm going to ask him to write on. The trauma or the tragedy, the trauma, and the triumph of what? Of Good Friday. But he said, do you all know that in Holy Week, Saturday is not really glorified? We have Good Friday, right? Monday, Thursday. You know, whatever we do on Monday, Tuesday, beginning of Holy Week. He called it Silent Saturday. But that is the storm before what? The storm. The, no, no, the, the calm before the storm on on Easter Saturday, on, on whatever you call it, Silent Saturday. Jesus, for our sake, you died. Give me something else to work with. And that morning, you rose, and all heaven held its breath till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. So you can be, you, you can, you, you, if, you, if you're not a poet, you can write this. And I had to just back off a little bit and let you uh, uh, get really to the meat of the song. And I hope when you go back and you broadcast, you go back to the broadcast or you go Google King of Kings. Is that what it is, Minister? King of what? King of Kings, right? Just Google King of Kings. Many people sang it. But I want you to meditate upon the words of that song. I want us all to stand on our feet as I ask Pastor Barbara to come and lead us in a quick time of prayer. Amen. I'm so glad. Amen. A uh, 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 family from Delaware came and last night I was running all around. I got home late. I wanted to call them and say, could you just come and encourage, you know, Grandpa? Mm -hmm. I couldn't get to calling them. Guess who shows up? They, do. they show up. They show up. How many of you know that God knows your heart? Yes. And God knows that what you couldn't do, but he knows you wanted to do. Yes. He will do it for you. Come on, let's go before the throne room of Hallelujah. God and pray. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we yield. We yield, we yield, we yield. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your death of your son, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your death, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Your burial, but most of all, your resurrection. Thank you, Lord. God, we know mm. that we are resurrected with you. Yes, Lord. So, God, you have given us all power. All power. Over all the power. Over all the power. Of the enemy. Of the enemy. And nothing. Nothing. Shall by any means. Shall by any means. Hurt us. Hurt us. Father, we are living in a world that's mixed mm. up and crazy. Lord but God, we thank you. Thank Hallelujah. You. Glory. That we can declare a thing mm. and it shall come to pass. Mm. We thank you, Lord, for your glorious church, oh God. Oh my Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah that we're a part of, Father. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you paid the price, yes, God. Yes, you did, Lord. That we might have eternal life, God. Thank you, Lord. But, Lord, you said that we are to tarry until you mm. come. So, Father, in the name of Jesus mm. and in the resurrected power of Jesus Christ, mm. we command everything that's in not the name like of you Jesus. to be gone from our life in oh the name my God. of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for mm. the power, the grace that you have given us, God, mm. to serve you, Lord, in thank the you, beauty Lord. of holiness. Father, thank we thank you today. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful for the grateful, King Lord. of Kings and the oh Lord of Lords. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, thank you. that when you left, God, mm. you said you would not leave us helpless, God. Mm. You would not leave us comfortless, God. Thank but you, you would send the Holy Ghost. Mm. Hallelujah. And we would just yield to the presence of the Holy Spirit today. 
God, we yield. Thank you, we Lord. yield. We yield. We yes, yield. Lord. Hallelujah. We yield. We yield. We yield, Father. Hallelujah, God. Mm. And we receive your power, God. Yes, Lord. We receive your anointing, Father. Yes, Lord. We receive the power of the resurrected Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Dwelling on the inside mm. of us. And because of that, God, we speak to sickness yes, and we Lord. command it to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of we Jesus. speak to oppression and we command it to go. In the name we of speak Jesus. to depression, mm. suppression, mm. and everything that's not like Jesus yes, Christ. Lord. And we command it to go mm. by the power of the resurrected Lord. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Thank you. We bless you. Yes, Lord. We praise you, Father. Mm. We magnify you. Thank you. We Lord. glorify you and we yield to yes, the presence Lord. of the Lord that's in this place yes, Lord. right now yes, in now. the name of Jesus. In Thank you of... Father. Mm. Thank you for touching God. Mm. Thank you for healing God. Mm. Thank you for moving by your spirit in our lives God. Lord we just focus in God. Thank you, on Lord. the goodness, God, yes, that Lord. you have bestowed upon us, God. Yes, Lord. It is bigger than a problem. Yes, it is Lord. bigger than a circumstance or a situation. Mm -hmm. You are God. Hallelujah. And we yield yes, this Lord. Resurrection Sunday. We yield, Father God. We yield. We yield. We yes, yield. Lord. And we ask, Holy Spirit, yes, that Lord. you have your way. Yes, Lord. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Yes, Lord. And because you're having your way, Holy yes, Spirit, Lord. we know that we are free. Yes, Lord. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yes, Lord. God, we're free to praise you. Mm. We're free to worship you. Yes, we're Lord. We're free to love on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That we are discovering, Father. Yes, Lord. Just who we are in you, God. Yes, Lord. We are learning, God. Yes, Lord. What the price that you paid and what it means for thank us. You, Lord. God, we just thank you this thank morning. You, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your power. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your touch. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You are so good, God. Yes, Lord. And we are so grateful. Thank to be you. called by your name, God. By your name, Lord. You called us each by name, God. You called us out of darkness, God. Thank you, Lord. Into your marvelous light. Yes, Lord. And we are so grateful. So grateful, so grateful, so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just say thank you thank once you, Lord. again. Yes, Lord. In the matchless and all-powerful name of Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. To the Lamb amen. of God. Come on, Hallelujah. let's put those hands together and give God a praise offering for our worship team. And Pastor Barbara, come on, we can do better than that. You don't even know how much they labor before the throne room of God just to come out and be a blessing unto you to be able to impart power into your life. You may be seated. Amen. All week, we had a prayer time. And from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, those of you who are able to, we tuned in for prayer. And I heard the voice of a young man. I thought I knew who he was, but I wasn't sure. How many of you know if you don't see people, you can't associate voices with faces, right? You got to be careful, amen? And so on one of the days, I was bold enough to ask, who is this? Amen. And it was no other than our own dear brother Andrew. Amen. Amen. And confirm for me the anointing that is upon his life. It doesn't matter what you've been through. But I know is that there is an anointing on your life. And I thank God for your dad. Amen. Who made sure. Like somebody say your pop. Who made sure that, you know, uh, uh, he, he brings you right here to encourage a young preacher he had found. And we thank God for Minister James who introduced the family to the church. Can I get a witness? Amen. You'll be surprised. The church does not grow because of preaching. The church grows just from the principle that Peter 
Andrew had. Andrew was the one who brought what? Peter. Come on, I get a witness. And everybody here, there is somebody that has been assigned to you that you can bring, not necessarily to Germantown, but to the kingdom. And out of time, people are already saved. They just need a rekindling. Come on, I get a witness of their faith. For those of you who have been here for a long time, Pastor Barbara, Brother Tony, Brother Al, Sister Marsha, uh, y'all, 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 y'all old gods. Y'all, y'all go a long way back. Sister Renette, I don't want to mention name. Brother James, I want to let you all know there's a reason why you've been hanging on all these years. I didn't understand, but now I do. Amen. That you are here to complete your assignment. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. Amen. Uh, Brother Mark Jones, I was going to surprise you. Your boy Kevin was supposed to come to sing today. It was a surprise, but he was not doing too well this morning. Brother Wayne, you, 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 you just, you just, you just a new crop. You just came in lately, but you, you make me feel like you've been here a long time ago. I better watch you, Amen. But we certainly thank God, Minister Kidada, through your dad, you've been here a long time. But you are here, Sister Gates, Brother Coran. You're here to complete your assignment. But remember, your assignment may be different from when you first walked in. You got to seek the face of God. Can I get a witness? And I guarantee you one thing, I would not hold back as long as you tell me. I don't want to hear from anybody. I want to hear from you. Would you believe God is calling you? If you come in and say, Pastor, I, I, God is calling me to take over Germantown Church of the Brethren. That one, God has to confirm that to me too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother Andrew. Just come up, just come up, just come up uh, on prayer. You know, you, you had a great week on the prayer line. Just come up. I mean, I got to tell you this. He's a trained church young guy. At the church I went to yesterday, I didn't know you cannot walk through the aisle. I walked through the aisle and they rebuked me. Now, you know, Pastor Richard, I was ready for a fight. So after the service, I was looking for the lady. And I said, young lady, I didn't find her, but I told the head usher. I said, you better tell your usher, listen, listen, rules, amen, are meant for those who are members, amen. Those who show up who don't know rules, amen, you got to cut them a slack. See, 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 show what Brother Andrew did. I wish the camera was him. He went all the way around, amen, and showed up. Amen. If I had gone with him yesterday, he would have shown me proper church etiquette, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Um, it's, a great, it's a great time to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm so honored. I'm so privileged. Thank you, Pastor Richard, for allowing me to be here and just at this pulpit. It's been a while since I've even been at a pulpit, but thank God. And this is exactly what I want to talk about, that prayer, because how many of you know that we serve a very, very intentional God? I mean, he's intentional about everything he does, all the way down to the smallest detail. He's intentional about it. Many, many, well, nobody knows this except for my wife, really. Last Sunday, I was tempted not even to come because I was, I was so tired of coming to church and it seemed like I was playing church because I wasn't living out the word. I was receiving those words Sunday after Sunday and they was powerful. They was, you know, like Jesus said, you know, that, that word get planted and then the devil come immediately and take that word. He was, it was going, I was going through the motion. You know, a lot of people ain't know because, you know, you could come to church and sit right there and just be cool. Get the word and come back and it just becomes a, a lifestyle, just church. I just got to come to church, you know. And I, I told my wife, I said, you know, I'm tired of just coming to church. I'm tired of just playing church. I can't do this. It wasn't sitting right in my spirit. I said, I'd rather not go than to play church. So, you know, I told her that. And you know what my wife said, you know, thank God for wives, right? She said, baby, this might be the day. This might be the day in my turnover, you know. I had no clue, but thank God for pastors. Because the pastor, after doing the service, said that, guess what? We're going to have a prayer this whole week. We're going to be on the line this whole week. And he, he directly said, called me out and said, I want you to be there. How many of you know you, it's, it's, it's important for you to be obedient to your leaders and your pastors? Be submissive. I, I made the sacrifice to be there, you know. And, 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 you know, I want to be super real with you because God has done a great thing this past week. I, I promise you. I promise you. I, I, 
I wasn't even expecting it, but God showed up in such a miraculous way in my life. I, you know, I don't know what he did in everybody else's life, but I'm sure because the power of God was just through those airways on that phone every night, night after night, night after night. You know, and not only did we do the prayer every night, but we was encouraged to read the five-day devotional, which was even better. How many of you know that, you know, habitually to break a habit, you got to, you know, three to five days, you could do it, doing the same thing habitually. So for me, that gave me the power to overcome what I was going through. So for me, you know, I was like habitually, uh, what they call it, functionally drinking dude. I was drinking, you know. At, Every day I would just drink, you know, and it wasn't be, and me and my spirit, it wasn't because I was like, oh, I'm addicted. I just, I was just like, you know what, I want to do it. I probably wanted to quiet the voices or whatever, mainly, but I was doing it. I was doing it. The whole time I know that I got a gift in me, everything. However way it went, you know, God forgave me. And I knew that, I, I never just tried to do something on my own because I knew that God was going to be the one that's going to bring me through. And I just was waiting on him. I just kept on pressing. And I, and, and, and after that, that prayer, the prayer line, and I prayed that day, and I was just like, oh, my God, the fire is, the fire is just still there. And I didn't even know. I never knew what God was doing, Pastor. I did not know. But I just want to encourage you, man. Um, I want to encourage the brothers and the sisters, like, to really, to really plug in. Because since then, you know, and I haven't even been counting the days, but I, I just thank God every day. I'm just looking towards that. Because since I woke up that day, you know, well, not even since I woke up, but I just been chilling. I ain't been drinking. You know, I've been chilling. Honestly, honestly, I haven't been drinking. My wife can testify for me. I haven't been drinking, you know. So I'm thankful for that. And I've just been getting more. My mind has been clearer. God has reminded me of the vision. And he's just restoring me. I, let's just say on this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, that God has resurrected me. Risen me up. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. And, you know, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. And, and, and I wasn't using my gift, and my gift is to be utilized for the body. You know, for my wife, for my family, for those that are lost. You know, I know that God got a calling. I've been running from this place right here, this pulpit, for a while. For a while. I've been in the slump, broke, busted, and disgusted. That's been me. But how many know that the Lord can clean you up if you let him? He do a real good job, too. He, that's enough, Pastor. That's enough. I don't want to. I don't want to go over my time. Pat. I want to be obedient to the time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, come on, come on. That's your message, right there. Somebody has already been received. Come on, somebody. I heard a someone right there. Amen. Your restoration will come through your resurrection. Come on, come on, come on, and give God some praise. Amen. I heard a message right there. Hey man, your restoration, come on somebody, will come through your understanding of his resurrection. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. Amen. Brother Andrew, you can be seated. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, come on, say Lord, thank you. Say Lord, thank you. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Listen, I've shared with you many times about how our ministry has changed and has shifted. And Pastor Barbara, you will now remember this. But before COVID, when we were having Bible study, and Brother Danny was here, and we were talking about what to do, and we were talking about how we used to have crusades in Center City, and we had uh, music in Center City one time. We were hitting the city so hard. Amen. Never forget. Uh, one of the city officials, I think he was the vice something, he came down and he said, listen, you guys, do you guys have a permit? Because he was shocked that we were there from 11 to almost 4.30 doing nothing but talking about the Lord. And we had, we had some people that, you know, just, 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 just did not hold back. But they made a mistake because they gave me a license all the way from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Because we wanted to catch the lunch crowd and we wanted to catch what? The, the closing crowd. I, I got to be honest, though. The only thing I didn't do, you're not supposed to tap in into the city's what? Electricity. You're supposed to take your own. You're watching the service live and you're from the city. Don't come after me. 
So when he came, all of a sudden, I was like, dang. But he did not even see that we are plugged in into what? Into, uh, into the city. Yeah. He just left us alone. And that was the last crusade we had in sin. He said, why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because Pastor Barbara, you said something that time. I said, Pastor, but have you thought about new ministries? Have you thought about doing things differently? Have you? And I just said, yeah, that's a young lady. She just contemporary. She just wants new stuff. But I listened in my spirit. Come on, somebody. But not only did she say that, but she's been faithful. How many of you know a lot of time God puts something in your spirit, but God wants you to be the one, amen, amen to see the transition? Oh, yeah. See, I, I got to be real with you. I can bring preachers in. They can come in and preach a good sermon, but they're not the pastors of the church. Can I get a witness? I'm the under shepherd. My responsibility is to, what, is to tie it all together. And so I have the history. Turn to somebody and say, Pastor got the history. You don't have the history. So allow me to be me. You don't have to repeat. Allow me to be me so that I can put it all together. And I've watched her. Some of you, none of your business. When did she become a pastor? Who made a pastor? That's none of your business. But I'm telling it now because that day we were sitting around here or somewhere, you know, and she said what she said. But it's been almost how many years? Five, no, more than five, about seven years. She has never one day criticized pastor. Everything she's done is to help me to fulfill what, he had, what she had spoken. Can I get a witness? See, some of you can't handle that because it's too much pressure. But she comes in always ready, amen, to do something. Brother Andrew came in today. I didn't know she was going to stand up. And I didn't set him up. All I wanted him to do was just to come share with us being on prayer line because we couldn't come to church. We have Holy Week. We just did it on prayer line. But I was blessed. Amen. And what is all tying in for me is that he gave you his testimony. Can I get a witness? And in his testimony, he said, his wife has been very supportive. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. So you can fool me with your speaking in tongues. You can fool me with your church stuff. I've been in church all my life. I know how to play church. I know, I know church folks. Because I was never one of those people that, that rebelled against the church. I rebelled against the Lord, but I never rebelled against the church. Come on, somebody. But she, he said, she encouraged what? Him. Some of you, this is what you need to do to your spouses. You've got to what? Encourage what? Your spouse. But, but, but th th this is the interesting part. With what he said, God is my witness. And I'm going to put it in a way that you got it. Because I want you to know that for me, that's how God has been moving. The speaking in tongues is good. The, 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 the hitting people on the head with prayer. All is good. It's all good. Wherever you get your healing, your break, to go ahead and get it. Amen. But God has been doing things for me that shows me that God is in control. The little things, but powerful things. We go to a store in Franklin Mills on Saturday. I didn't even want to be bothered. But you know, you got to always be careful when baby Jane is in the house. Amen. She didn't want to drive. Franklin Mills, I had to drive them. So we go, we're going to buy something. Pastor Barbara, we buy the thing from what? From the store. And then the cashier asks us, where do you live? We tell him where we live. Amen. God is my witness. And then he's like, who is your dentist? I mean, listen, you know, people get into people's business. I'm like that too. So I had no problem. I wasn't listening. But then Elizabeth calls me and said, come, come and hear what the guy is saying. Listen, we're paying. He asked us where we live. He did not say anything. What car do you drive? What, what job do you have? Y'all look all, you know. None of those things. Who is your dentist? And then he goes to a site. And shows us that our dentist is under indictment. Wow. Wow. So you don't know who the person is. I'm not, you know, I don't care. I, wow. I mean, listen, and, and on Monday, he pulled out about four of my tooth. That now I'm beginning to believe that he didn't have to pull them. And on Monday, we were going to make a phone call to set up another appointment. How many of you know the God is an awesome God? 
See, I'm trying to help you to understand that when he lines it all up, you've got to what? Trust him. And even if it doesn't look like it is lined up, you got to trust him. Because when you hear somebody's testimony, God allowed people to share their testimony so that you would know that if God did it for him, if God did it for her, the same God will do it for you. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. It's only a God who sits high and who looks below and knows everybody by name and knows everything that is going on. I tell you, you cannot shut me down on Easter Sunday. You cannot shut me down on resurrection Sunday because I came uh, with my own praise. Uh, God uh, set me up. Amen. Uh, because we didn't have to go to the store. Whatever we were going to get, we didn't really need it. And the time that we went, how many of you know that if God had not slowed us down, we'd have gone there too early and meet a different cashier. And I didn't want to go, but I thank God because all of a sudden when Elizabeth called me, all of a sudden my face brightened up. Not because she called me, but my face brightened up. Because again, God had proved. Or had proven. That he can line everything up. I believe in prophecy. I believe God is raising our prophets. I believe that God is giving a word to people that can see what's going to happen before. But the true mark of a prophet is that what he says shall come to pass. But you don't need the title of a prophet to see God work like this. That's the same thing Brother Andrew was saying. He didn't know he was going to be called up. I didn't know. I'm just trying to fill time. Just trying to make time, you know. So I'm just, I'm just like trying to like do a live service, you know. Hey, brother, are you ready? Come on, come on, come on. Just say something. Amen. But he comes and he ministers. Amen. Because I believe for some young people, that's what you needed to hear. That's why this is a live service. Come on, somebody. If you don't like it, you can go to the church down the street. Not only has God isn't been good. Amen. His dad says he's also ready to throw a bombshell. Amen. So sometime in April, you will see him too. Amen. And everybody who is here who believes he's a minister, you call me and say, Pastor, give me a slap. We're going to start with sermon. Amen. We don't want you to be like all oh, preachers who talk too long. How many of you know sometimes we got to restrict preachers? Amen. I didn't hear what I just said. So we're going to start with anybody. All oh, beginning what? Did summer start? Did summer start yet? Not, not yet, right? Okay, yeah, somebody started for Pastor Richard. So, from now on to the end of the year, anybody that has a word from the Lord, amen, call me, amen, and say, Pastor, I got my slot. Can you give me my slot so that you can come and share with us what the Lord is doing what in your life? It will start with a summer net, amen. amen, 20, 25 minutes, amen, give you five minutes extra grace, amen, see all these bishops who come here sometimes, amen. You can't tell them. Uh, how many of you know you can't tell a bishop? God is a good God. How many of you know that? Amen. I don't even know. I'm confused. Well, yeah, there's a video selection that can come. Son, uh, uh, get your phone off. Uh, turn your phone off. Give it to Brother James. Give your phone to Brother James for something. Give your phone to Brother James. Yeah. I see your face. I know you don't want to do it, but that's Grandpa talking. Give your phone to Brother James. Give your phone to Brother James. Give your phone to Brother James. Give your phone to Brother James, son. Give your phone to Brother James, okay? How long is it taking? How long is it taking? Okay, we're going to strike a deal. As long as you don't turn it on, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. There's a video that's coming up. There's a video that's coming up. It's his phone, right? Man, he doesn't want to give it out. I don't blame him. Amen. Now don't blame him, but he's not gonna let's watch it. No. Uh, let's let, let's let's see if we can get that video video out right. It's a quick video.
That's what happens when there are technical difficulties in the live service. We're good? We might be able to get it. We might be able to get it. Well, as of some of you are just watching to see what's going on, we're supposed to show a short video selection, but it's not ready yet. If I see a thumb up, I will, I will wait. If not, I will just move on. Those of you waiting, it still has to do with. Well, we're going to try to see if it can be shown next week if it's not coming up. Tonight. How many of you are ready to hear the word of God? Amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise. I'm going to see if again, if uh, Pastor Barbara, you can, they will bring the microphone to you. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Jason, just come up and help me take this microphone to Pastor Barbara. This one, come on. She's still holding the phone, but it's not home. How many of you know we got to encourage them? If we want them to come to church, amen, they got to come just as they are, right? Amen. She's going to read some stuff for me so that I don't take too long. How many of you are ready to hear the word of God? Amen. Praise God. Come on, put those signs together one more time. And give God some praise. Let us, let us pray. Let us pray. Now, Father, I pray that you set me aside. I pray that what will come out of my mouth will be what you want your people to hear. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our God, our strength, and our redeemer. And let the people of God say, Amen. 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 Title for today's message is Resurrection Reflections. Resurrection Reflections. Bible school, seminary, wherever you received your training you are you are told that Easter Sunday is a day you don't have to preach too long how many of you know that you got to use wisdom say you don't have to preach long because there are a lot of visitors who come and you don't want to scare them with a long sermon. Can I get a witness? Sister Marsha says, Pastor, take your time. So I'm going to listen to Sister Marsha, but I'm also, I'm also going to use wisdom. Amen. In Luke is the son of man feeling what you feel. In John is the son of God. You can go back. See, it's not my fault. We can go back. I think Let's put our hands together and give God a praise offering for Brother Andre. Amen. He makes everything work at Germantown. Amen. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise. Amen. Uh, let's see if it's if for a young boy. Praise God. My name is Erin Larry Mtsebi. I'm from Rainbow Christian School. I'm in Pistis class. I want to share with you Jesus through the entire Bible. In Genesis, Jesus Christ is the birth of life. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's our high priest. In Deuteronomy, he's the prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he's the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he's our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he's our king's main redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he's our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra and Nehemiah, he's the rebuild of the broken down walls of human Amen. life. 
In Esta, he's our Mordecai. In Job, he's our ever living redeemer. Amen. In Psalms, he's our shepherd. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he's our wisdom. Amen. In Song of Solomon, he's our loving bridegroom. Amen. In Isaiah, he's the prince of peace. Amen. In Jeremiah, he's the righteous branch. In Lamentations, he's the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel's the wonderful four-faced man. Amen. In Daniel's the fourth man in life's fiery furnace. Amen. In Isaiah is the faithful husband forever married to the backslider. Amen. In Joel is the baptized of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. In Amos is a burden bearer. Amen. In Obadiah is mighty to save. Amen. In Jonah is a great foreign missionary. Amen. In Micah is the messenger of beautiful Amen. feet. In Nahum is our strength and shield. In Habakkuk is God's evangelist. Amen. In Zephaniah he's our savior. Amen. In Haggai is the restorer of God's lost heritage. Amen. In Zachariah is the fountain opened up in the house of Amen. David for sin and uncleanliness. Amen. In Malachi is a stone of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. Amen. In Matthew, Jesus Christ is the king of the Jews. Amen. In Mark, he's the servant. In Luke is the son of man, feeling what you feel. In John is the son of God. In Acts is the savior of the world. In Romans is the righteousness of God. In 1 Corinthians is the rock, the father of Israel. In 2 Corinthians is the triumphant one, giving victory. In Galatians is your liberty, he say you free. In Ephesians is the head of the church. In Philippians is your joy. In Colossians is your completeness. And Thessalonians is your hope. In First Timothy, he's your faith. Amen. In Second Timothy is your stability. Amen. In Titus, he's truth. Amen. In Philemon is your benefactor. Amen. In Hebrews is your profession. Yes. In James is the foundation of your faith. Wow. In First Peter is your example. Amen. Second Peter is your period. Yes. In First John is your life. Yes. Second John is your pattern. Amen. Third John is your motivation. In Jude is the foundation of your faith. Amen. And in Revelation, he is your coming king. Yeah. He's the first and the last, the Amen. beginning and the end. He's the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He's the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. Yours was, yours is, yours will be. Unmoved, unchained, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised and brought in him. He was pierced in his pain. He was dead and brought life. He was persecuted and brought freedom. Amen. He's risen and brings power. He reigns and brings peace. Amen. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. The schools Amen. can't explain him and the leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. Yeah. Hitler can't replace him. He's alive. Wow. Love, longevity and more. His goodness, Amen. kindness, gentleness and God. Amen. He's holy, righteous, mighty, powerful and pure. His wings are right and his word is eternal. Amen. His wills are changing and mind is on me. He's my redeemer. He's my savior. He's my God. He's my peace. He's my joy. He's my comfort. He's my Lord. And he rules my life. What an awesome, awesome, awesome testimony. Come on, let's put those hands together and give God some praise. And I'm not trying to knock anybody down. But before you think about buying all the good things and, and, and stuff that young people demand, teach your child the things of God. Don't leave the Philadelphia School District system to teach your child the things of God. Maybe you don't know about God. That's why you can't teach your children. At least drag them into the house of God. Amen? Amen? Your grandchildren, your children, uh, your, every child that you can hold hands on. Amen. Ask permission from their guidance and bring them into the house of God. This was a kid that was in P6, which may be third or fourth grade. Amen. And yet he is so full of the word of God. I don't even know why I did this. Now I'm in trouble. Amen. That's a preacher right there. Amen. I mean, I can top that. I can, I can, I can top it, but 
I got to do what I got to do. Amen. Praise God. Resurrection reflections. For those of you who would say, Pastor, we didn't get a text. We need, we need, we need, we need, we need to be able to tell somebody what the pastor preach about. Uh, go tell the person to read the whole 15th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. The whole 15th chapter. But I'm going to ask Pastor Barbara if you could please read uh, uh, chapters, chapter 15 verses 12 through 19. And please remember that anytime she reads, it's not part of my 30 minutes. Amen. So somebody needs to do the calculation right and not say, Pastor, you oversee your, uh, you did go over your 30 minutes. First Corinthians 15. Amen. This is the New King James Version. That's good. Is that okay? Yes, please. Okay. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also uh, you Pastor are Barbara, saved. Uh, which, what chapter are you reading? You said 1 Corinthians 15. 15. Yes. Okay. 15, right? Mm-hmm. 1 Corinthians 15. I have New King James. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, just start from verse 12. Verse 12, okay. Yes, please. 1 okay. Corinthians 15, verse 12. Okay. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not raise or rise. Continue. Yes, please. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiful. Amen. You can stop right there. So here the Apostle Paul in the 15th chapter makes a legal and remember the word legal, makes a legal defense of the resurrection of Christ. I understand that. I don't need to convince anybody today. I know that we're not in a courtroom, so I don't really ought to get to what? Legal. But I'm just trying to contextualize what the apostle Paul is doing in that 15th chapter. And how many of you know that apostle Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Amen. He was a trained, amen, had one of the most brilliant legal minds then. So here he makes a presentation. He, he comes across like he's in a courtroom, amen, and the jury, amen, is there, and, and he is the uh, uh, defense lawyer, and he's making what? His case, amen, to convince those that are in the courtroom. And if you go back and, and you really read how he pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds on why, amen, Christ is what? Is risen and it's true that he's risen. It is fantastic. I understand that you just want some three points, but I also want you to learn how to contextualize a text. So that's why you've got to go back, amen, and read 1 Corinthians 15. In fact, one of his arguments is that look at the seed when you put a seed seed in the ground. Amen. The seed first Lord, has yeah. to die. Amen. But when the seed is as the seed, the seed dies, amen, a plant comes out of Lord. what was sown. Can yeah. I get a witness? It's all right there in 1 Corinthians 15. And he uses that, amen, to explain to those who are listening or to those who will be reading. He's using that to help German town to understand that the reason why when your loved one die and that he's going to be raised up, he uses that analogy and says, amen, in the same way that seed that was sown that dies, but it is what? 
but there is a plan that comes out of it brothers and sisters I submit to you that even though the seed has died but something happened to the dead seed because there is a, a connection between the dead seed and the new plant amen yeah. and then he goes to hammer a point and says that listen so now you understand that the bodies that we have is like the seed amen that is put in the ground yeah. when I was saw brother Hill yesterday uh, being laid to the ground uh, I knew that there was my brother uh, I knew that I was not going to see him forever and my confidence and my trust in the word of God was what carried me through that someday I will see him yeah. not because I was crying not because people were carrying on but I know that I'll see him because according to 1 Corinthians amen 15 Paul says that when we die yeah. we're going to be raised up yeah. And when we are raised up, there is what I call a logical connection between our bodies now Glory. and what we shall be like. Yes. Can I get a witness? That's the more reason why we need to take our faith seriously. Because in defense, Paul is saying that when you die, Whatever form we will inhabit in what? In eternal life. There is going to be a sense of remembrance. You are not going to have the same body as you had whilst you were here on earth. You remember the Sadducees, they went to Jesus and they tried to treat Jesus. The Pharisees believed in the law. The Sadducees did not believe in the life after death. So they tried to treat Jesus. What was it, Brother Andrew? He told them, that they came to him and said, listen, there was a man that was married to what? There was a woman that but was married to a man. He died and he had seven brothers and all the yeah. seven married her. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, if you are the son of God, whose wife mm -hmm. would, would be? I mean, that's a trick question. Yeah, I mean, you got to be the son of God to deal with them Sadducees. And somebody said they are sad to see. <laughs> and the Pharisees are far to see. Amen. So, so, so Jesus said, this is a very simple question. He says, in the new life, well. there will be no what? Marriages. <laughs> but yet, you will recognize the connection that you had whilst you are here on earth. Oh, that's why who was the guy who the rich man and who? And Lazarus and and, 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 and he was trying himself and oh, please send people down to, to my brothers and sisters and tell them about what? About uh, that they need to get their act right because there's a heaven and there's a hell. Well. Pastor Richard, why don't you preach like this? Well, listen, Anna, you're not going to listen to me. That's why I bring preachers in the house to tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> amen. Amen. So the resurrection is what? It's real. And I thank God that this morning I'm pastoring a church that I don't have to come and defend that Christ oh, rose up victoriously from the grave. There are many pastors today that are standing in the pulpit and they have to make a defense. They have to convince their church members that there was even a man called Christ amen, who walked on the face of the earth and died on the cross. It is amazing, Pastor Barbara, what we have done to the gospel just to make people feel comfortable but I come today to let you know that as long as the doors of this church are open, the gospel of Jesus Christ will be preached. Amen. We will continue to preach that he died, he rose up, he is coming back again. If you don't like it, you can go to the church down the street. But we got to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. God knew that Pastor Richard is different. God knew that I needed a special church. Come on somebody. And so he picked me up all the way from Ghana. Come on somebody. Knew all my mess. and Knew all that I've been through. And knew all that I did, did not even know about myself. And said I got a place for you. It's located at 6611 Germantown Avenue. Y'all know where Germantown Avenue is? You know where 6611 is there? He said there are a whole lot of people that would understand who you are. And I want somebody to know that God has been good to this church. Even though we are the mother church and we are 300 years old, but I come today.
today to declare to the principalities that the doors of this church Glory. would never be closed down. Hallelujah. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. As long as we preach the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the church may whittle down to two people. The church may whittle down to three people, but the bills of this church will be paid. The doors of this church will be open. It will never be turned into whatever. It will never be turned into a museum. We would always have somebody yeah. on these grounds proclaiming, amen, the birth of Christ, proclaiming ha, at the death of Christ, and proclaiming the resurrection of Christ, and proclaiming the ascension of Christ, and proclaiming that Christ is coming back. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. I understand that many of us have come out of traditions where we take an aspect of the gospel and emphasize it when you go to a holiness church. All you expect is to get a dose of holiness. If you go to a kingdom minded church, all you expect is to get a dose of kingdom mindedness. If you go to a Baptist church, all you expect is to get a, a dose of baptism. But I thank God for the church of the brethren. I thank God for the Germantown church of the brethren that we preach an exalted Christ. Come on, somebody. We preach, amen, that a Christ, amen, was raised up. How many of you have ever come here and heard me say, this is what the Church of the Brethren teaches? I may sneak in a bit here or there. When I got called 30 years ago, the first thing I told them is, listen, do you believe in the word of God? They said, yes. I had my master's degree, but I didn't mean anything. I had been to Sweden. I was going to get a, 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 a PhD in church history. You can't blame me for being smart. Right. You can't blame me for being smart. I mean, I know I'm smart, but I also know I a whole lot of things I don't know. And the reason why y'all think I'm smart is because I hang, I hang around smart people. There's nothing in this life that I've not been able to do that God is not giving me somebody. What a blessing. It's all because I serve a risen Savior. He talks with me. He walks with me. Mr. Kida, that's why I can't sing. Because I could sing. You know where I'm taking this to, right? But God knows how to humble you, amen? Yes. God gave you everything you wanted. Some of you would never serve God. So, 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 so I just said, what can I do? I mean, what can I say? Just give you something to go with. I said, I'm, 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 I'm Mr. Kidada, I got to go back. Because one time I asked you to look for the literary... Uh, a genre that literally style that when you take the letters of a word amen and expand upon it you send it to me because everyone that sent it was wrong but I'll look back in some of your old messages amen so I'm just taking the word resurrection amen and I just want to share with you what that resurrection for me means amen. what those letters stand for is that okay that, that, yes. That's a style I like, amen? Because I figured out that, you know, you would remember that. So, the word resurrection has how many what? words? What letters? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A dozen. 12 disciples. How many of you know 12 is special? Amen. How many of you know there were 12 apostles? Yes. There were 12 what? Sons of Jacob. Come on, somebody. Oh, 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 y'all better get ready when he starts preaching. There were 12 tribes. So don't mess with that 12. When you talk about apostles, you know, God is still raising up apostles, but don't try to make yourself one of the 12. Because well, even Peter, even Paul made it clear that he was not one of the 12. Yeah. He said he was what? The 13th, almost to say that what? I, I was a late one. So you call yourself a late one, but don't make sure you're amongst the 12. I'm going to leave it alone. So the word resurrection has what? 12 what? Letters, Letters right? So, when I look at the when I remember the word, what? Resurrection. What are some of the things that come up to me? I don't think I can make it all by five after one. So, five after one, I'm going to start wherever I am. Amen. But, but, but let me put it all out to you. Right? Take your pen if you have a paper. Take, I want you to remember what Pastor, Rem Pastor Richard remembers about what? About these letters. The first one is redemption. Mm -hmm. I want you to write it down. If I get you writing it down, I can stop. The first one is what? Redemption. I know by the time I'm done, Jane can bring it up. Number two, the E stands for me for eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen? Eternity. This is Pastor Richard's reflection. Mm -hmm. I'm in the word, right? I gave you a text. 
I gave you a title. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to give you something to work with, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm calling them reflections. Mm -hmm. So these are my reflections. I don't know what your reflections are. But every time I think about what? Resurrection. I think about what? Redemption. Yeah. I think about what? Eternity. I think about what? Salvation. The difference between salvation and redemption for me is that salvation is personal. When I think about what? The second S is what? Success. Success. Y'all getting my accent right? Success. Okay. Y'all try to speak like y'all. Then all of a sudden you all switch on me. Brother Wayne, how do they say? T talk to me. How do they say? Success or success? How do you say? Oh, now, you see, now, now he's giving me his Italian accent. You giving me a Ghana accent. I don't know what you are talking about. We know, we but, but it's success. S U C E S S, right? And then you in resurrection for me is what universe. Amen. So you go back. You do your own reflection. Don't, don't mess with my message now. Okay, okay, okay. I gotta watch you. The R for me stands for what? Royalty. The E stands for what? Encounter. The C for me stands for who? Christ. Don't, I don't get too deep, Pastor Barbara. This is just one of those things. I was just like, Lord, you got to give me something to say to these knuckleheads. I, I say that I'm sorry. T stands for what? Trust. I stands for what? Intercession. O stands for what? Obedience. And then end for me stands for what? Newness. Amen. So just in case you don't get anything, I've given you what? 12 words coming out of what? Out of the letters of what? Of the resurrection. That for me has inspired me as encouragement. And I want somebody to know today, amen, that I was raised up, amen, by men and women of God who were baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were baptized, fire baptized, anything you can talk about the Holy Ghost. I was trained. I had a good teaching on what it means, amen, to understand the Holy Ghost and his gifts come on somebody. But Pastor Barbara, before they got me to that point, they helped me to understand that before I get to being baptized in the Holy Ghost I've got to understand the resurrection power and I believe that the reason why many of us and many of you are not getting it is because you claim that you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost you claim that you can speak in tongues you claim that you have the gifts of the Spirit but you have not had an encounter with the resurrected Christ come on and put those hands together and give God some praise I come to declare with all boldness I come to declare with all confidence amen that when you have had an encounter with the resurrected Christ you are never going back uh, Pastor Richard has thought about going back sometimes come on somebody oh but when I look at the resurrected Christ come on when I stand in the presence of the resurrected Christ my speaking in tongue don't mean anything my gifts of the spirit don't mean anything that that which moves me forward is an understanding that Christ <laughs> arose up from the grave. It doesn't matter what the devil puts me through. It doesn't matter what I put myself through because they'll put Jesus through the same thing. And somewhere in the word of God, it is said that if they knew what they were doing, they would not have crucified Christ. And so redemption. Redemption is a big word. Pastor Barbara, read for me Romans 5, 6 to 8 very quickly. And you write down Ephesians 1, 7. I, I want to rush through this very quickly. Ephesians 1, 7. I only have like about seven minutes. How am I going to do this? Uh, let's see what we can do. Romans 5, what was the verse? Romans 5, 6 to 8. Okay. For when we were still without strength. For when we were without strength. In due time. In due time. Christ died for the Christ ungodly. Christ died. For the ungodly. For the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man. For scarcely for righteousness. Will one die. Will one die. Yet perhaps, yet perhaps, for a good man, for a good man, someone would even dare to die. Someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates, but God demonstrates, demonstrates how His own love toward us, His own love towards us, in that while we were yet oh sinners, my, in that while we were yet, yet what sinners, sinners, Christ, Christ died, died for, for us. us. Listen, Hallelujah. how many of you know that there are people who have died for their country? Yes. 
And in fact, when you join the United States Army, and especially those of you who know anything about the Marines, when you sign up for, not the Marines, but the SEALs, amen, you are training every facet, amen, of the United States Army. But when the President of the United States gives a signal that you should go and capture Saddam Hussein, you should go and capture that guy who was hiding somewhere in Bangladesh. How, how many of you remember Saddam Hussein? Yeah. He was talking tough. And, and Colin Powell told him, you better shut up. And he kept running his mouth. Well, he woke up one day and the United States Air Force blasted all their towers. Yeah. They couldn't communicate. They couldn't do anything. The only place he could go was to go and hide yeah. in a hole. Come on, somebody. And when they found him, when the Marines, or whoever found him, and they saw him hiding in that what? They said, we bring you greetings. From the president of the United States. Well, listen, I don't agree with everything the United States does. It's done a lot of wrong, but don't mess with the United States. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Huh? There are people that have what died. I believe it's one of the fact, uh, you know, sections of the army that says the ultimate sacrifice. There are people that are paid what? The ultimate what? Sacrifice. But I come today to let you know that all you died for was just for a country that may not be there tomorrow. Your death would not redeem America. Those who have died for whatever reasons cannot bring what? Redemption. It was only the blood of Jesus that did what? That purchased our redemption. And I listen to the word redemption. It tells me that something has to be redeemed. It means that there was something there that was stolen. The devil came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said that I have come that you might have what? Have life and have it more abundant. Pastor Barbara, I'm getting a signal from what? From the skies right now. That abundant life is what Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden. But what would you do? They messed it up. How many of you know the story? They messed it up. They messed it up. And I want to make it clear to somebody. The gospel according to Pastor Richard says that Jesus came to undo what Adam did. Yeah. That's why it's called what? Redemption. Brother Tony, that's why it's called redemption. It was redeeming something. It was giving back to us that which we lost. I come today to let you know, don't walk out of this Easter service just feeling good. Walk out of the service knowing that you have been redeemed. The world has been redeemed. Your family has been redeemed. Now you're going to walk in the power of their redemption and this is what i like he says christ died for us whilst we were yet in sin when we were messed up when nobody even wanted to deal with us how many of you know that some of us we were in such a mess nobody wanted to deal with us and i went to church and i was at i was at allegheny and kensington and i've not been there for a couple of months it was one of the most pathetic scenes i've seen all my life i mean People block to block, just sleeping on concrete. This is America, the richest nation in the world. The nation that can go and try to take over another country. And yet you can feed your own people. All those people that were lying at Kensington. America has enough money to give everybody a mansion. Some of them were eating from what? From garbages. We used to go down and do ministry. And I was coming back and tell the woman's fellowship, we better be prayed out before we go. Because, you know, just going out and giving them clothes is not going to cut it. Because I see them well, take clothes and put it back in the trash. Come on, somebody. Oh, but we need to have the anointing of God to be able to let our families know, to be able to let this city know that Christ paid the price for the redemption of ourselves, for the redemption of the city, for the redemption of this world. We as his disciples have got to walk in that understanding. Yeah. Don't die for just a cause. Die for Christ. Amen. Because he redeemed you. You know, whatever you're going through, whatever I'm going through, and I go through too, just like you go through. But one thing I know is that because of Christ, yeah. because of Calvary, he made a way. And I challenge somebody prophetically I speak into your life. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the devil has put you through. Christ has already paid the price 
for your suffering. He's already paid the price for what you're going through. Now I declare in your spirit person, walk in victory. Come on, somebody. I'm not here to tell you what you need to take care of. I know what I need to take care of. But I'm here to declare to you that walk in your victory. Don't let the devil, amen, put you down. Don't let the devil confuse you by letting you know that you're not going to be able to make it. Yes, you're going to be making it. Because of the price that Christ paid on Calvary. Eternity. 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 What's it all about? In his resurrection, in his death, it what? It just emphasized the fact that he paid the price so that you and I will live what? Eternally. Uh, you can go through scripture. Everything you read this week, look for, 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 for scripture that helps you what? To understand eternal life. For God so what? Love what? The world. That he did what? That he gave what? His what? His only begotten what son that whosoever what believe at what in him that means that you got to believe the whole gospel you got to believe that he was born of mary you got to believe that he died on the cross you got to believe that he rose up victoriously from the grave you got to believe that he has ascended up unto his father and so if you believe all this and it is working in your life that you know that you are a candidate for eternal life come on and put those hands together and give god some praise am i the only person in this sanctuary on easter sunday who is excited i come to let you know that my mother's 103 years old i have come to accept that my mother is not going to live forever but I'm beginning to prepare come on somebody my understanding of what eternal life is come on somebody let me tell you something when she moves on I want to lie close to where she lies because that's still my mother but I don't know that it doesn't mean anything where I'm buried what matters is the decision that I make right now yeah. with Christ so that I can spend eternity with Christ and all those who die in Christ. Amen. Shall I spend eternity with Christ? Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. Brother Wayne, when we come into the house of God, when you are playing the keyboard, when we're doing all that we do, we got to have an eternal perspective. Just read for me John 3, 31. I'll just do two more and I'm done. John 3, 31. Do you have it? Yes. John 3, 31. 31, yes. Okay. Mm. It reads, he who comes from above is above all. Yes. He who is of the earth is earthly. Yes. And speaks of the earth. And speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven. He who comes from heaven. Is above all. Is above all. Hallelujah. So he's right. Seated on the right hand side of God. Making intercession for us all. Yes. And he sees it all. And because he sees it all. He's the only one that can take us into heaven. Or he can take us into hell. Yes. Salvation. Hold on to your salvation with fear. And trembling. And with trembling. I want you to know that if you're saved, like the Baptist teaches, once saved, always saved. I don't want to get into trouble because this means that if you were never saved, you're always going to have problems. But if you are saved, can I see a witness in this building, those who know they are saved? And I, and I, I didn't say you joined the church. I didn't say you gave me your right hand of fellowship. I didn't say you got baptized. I said, you know and you know without a shadow of doubt Hallelujah. that you are what? Saved. That you are saved. Come on, somebody. That you are to hold on to your salvation with fear and with trembling. Let me tell somebody, those of you who don't know football, but I'm telling you about the running backs. It's amazing that they are the ones that are least paid. How many of you know a little bit about football? I mean, the, 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 the cornerbacks and the wide receivers get paid because those are flashy what? Positions, right? The quarterback is a flashy position. The, the, the running back, it just looks like, you know, you just get beaten up. And I see how they'll be holding the ball. And these days, there are people that are skinny. They're not even as big as the running back. But they are trained to what? To yank the ball out of their hands. All they do is what? They just be what? Going back and forth, back and forth, seeing where you're going. And all they do is what? Grab the ball. And you don't need to be big to get the ball out of the running back's hand. 
Hold on to your salvation with what? With fear and with trembling. If you know that you are saved, you're going to hold on to your salvation. And that's why even in Ephesians, in the armor, he says that what? Put on what? The helmet of salvation. What does the helmet do? The helmet protects your head. It protects your mind. And you are saved. Where? In your head. You are saved. Amen. In your mind, not just your brain. In your mind, the seed of your emotion. Every decision that you make starts from where? From here. If you're going to sin, it starts from here. Pastor, did you say that? Yes, I said it. If you're going to move your leg, it starts from where? From here. But that's just your brain. Mm -hmm. Beyond your brain is your mind. And it's all mixed up there with your soul and with your spirit. That's why you got to hold on to all, what? your salvation. You got to protect your salvation. How many of you here say, Pastor, even if you don't, if you stop preaching, I heard you today. Hold on to your salvation. Oh, this Easter Sunday, I came to remind somebody if I don't preach again, I want you always to remember that Pastor Richard said, hold on to your salvation with fear and trembling. And the only way you can do that is because you have received the resurrection power. It's because you believe that Christ rose up from the grave. And because he rose up from the grave, and it's the same power that is within you. Amen. You're going to hold on to what? To your salvation success. And I'm done. How many of you want to be successful? Uh, the reality is that I wasn't born in America. I've been here 35 years. One of the saddest images that I saw was when those big sea planes were leaving Afghanistan. And that was the last flight. And I saw people holding on to what? On to the ties of the sea plane. Saying that if I don't get into this, I might as well die. Because the reality is that everybody believes that if you come to America, you're going to make it. I know, I know you all play the power ball. I mean, how much was the lottery? How much was the lottery? It was a billion dollars, right? Hmm? How much was it? It's a million dollars, right? Uh, Pastor Richard, did you buy a lottery ticket? No, I did not. But I, I see somebody thought I did buy it. No, I did not. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. Come on, somebody. But all I know is that it went to what? A billion dollars. My mom used to come to when she was in market. She's like, you want to tell me you know, the Dunkin' Donut trucks has nothing but donuts? I mean, that you can become a millionaire just selling what? Donuts. America is the only country that you can just come up with one line and you become famous and successful by the world standards. And yet there are so many of our children that are we raising up thinking they're going to be the next LeBron and next whatever, next whatever. The reality is that we got to raise them up. Not to think that the NBA is their what? Is their only route to success. Their only route to success is the resurrected Christ. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. I'm a pastor that believes in prosperity. I'm a pastor that believes in success. But I need to help somebody to know that the only way you can be successful is through the resurrected Christ. And when I think about success, when I think about resurrection, the word success comes to me. If you think I'm successful, it's not because you think whatever you think. Now, I tell you, there are times I look in my bank account and there's nothing in it. Mm -hmm. But I still trust God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I have more clothes than I will ever need all my life. Yes. Yes. I have more cars to ride in than all my life. Well, Pastor, why don't you give me one? God has not told me yet. <laughs> but my success is not based upon these things. My son says daily because Pastor Barbara, every day when I wake up, I know like you always say, my blessing is just what? A handshake away. Just like I met a guy, amen, at the store yes. and told me something that I would never have known. In the same way, I might run into what? What I call my Egyptian blessing. How many of you know the Egyptian blessing? What is the Egyptian blessing? Tell me. Y'all say, Pastor, you're just too hard. You don't believe in blessing. You don't preach prosperity. You don't do all that. Listen, <laughs> let me leave it alone. What is the Egyptian blessing? What is the Egyptian blessing? Blessing from the world. The Egyptian blessing is when the nation of Israel were coming out of what? Of Egypt. When God had finally said, listen, I'm going to kill these Egyptians. Yeah. But I want you women 
to ask for your friends. Ask for gold and ask for... I know why he didn't tell the men to do that. I see how y'all don't read the Bible. I read. It is not in the Bible asking the men to do that. He says what? Ask what? The woman to ask their friend because the women have the money. They got the gold. If they don't have it, they know how to find it. I mean, only a few weeks ago, Jane Jane was a baby. Now I got to borrow money from Jane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on national TV. I shouldn't. You don't know who Jane is. Amen. Amen. Yes, I believe in material blessing. But I only will receive an Egyptian blessing because I know it is the God who told me to take it from the Egyptians. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. I believe that out of this church, God, God is going to raise up young people that someday will affect the destiny of the city. Put those hands together and give God some praise. I believe without a shadow of doubt that out of this church, a millionaire would come. Even if they don't become a member of this church because of you, somebody would one day drop a check for a million dollars. Amen. Into our account. If you believe that, put those hands together and give God some praise. I believe without the shadow of doubt that somebody from our church will become a very successful person with your business. But all that don't mean anything if you have not encountered the resurrected Christ. That's why there are so many people with the good things of this life. But they're not happy. I know depression is real. I know that sometimes people can't take it anymore. They just got to what? Let it all what? Stop. But I come today to let you know that if you have encountered the resurrected Christ, amen, if you've encountered the resurrected Christ, you are successful. Turn to somebody and say, you are successful. Come on, turn, turn to who's sitting next. Even if you don't like him or her, just tell the person, you are successful. Because Christ rose up from the grave. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. So when I get the chance to preach again, maybe in two weeks, three weeks, I will finish this sermon. But the U in resurrection stands for universe. The R stands for royalty. The E stands for encounter. The C stands for Christ. The T stands for trust. I stands for intercession. The O stands for obedience. And the N stands for unity. What am I stopping? Pastor Barbara, I want when preachers come. Amen. We tell them, cut it out. Tell them, we'll bring them back. It may take six weeks, but they were coming back. Amen. Because I did the same to myself, right? You know, I can talk for the next two hours. But I got to use wisdom. Uh, uh, Sister Marsha, in the early days, right? We'll be here till three o'clock, right? Because those who will walk away, they can go home and eat. Amen. But we will be preaching the word. But today we just want to use wisdom. Come on, if you're here and you have experienced salvation, I want you to lift up your hands. If you've experienced salvation, I want you to lift up your hands. Come on and lift up your hands. Come on and lift up your hands. And I want you to just just say, Lord, thank you. I just want you to say, Lord, thank you. Because that's what the devil is after. The devil is after your salvation. Because he knows that when he can mess with your salvation, and he really can, but he will try to mess with your mind concerning how truly saved you are. With your hands lifted up, I want it to be a hand of surrender. I'm not asking you to do this because you feel sorry for me. I'm asking you to lift up your hand. On this Resurrection Sunday, we're not saying Christ is risen up again. He rose up just one time. And when he rose up, every day is Easter Sunday. Every day is Resurrection Sunday. And on Sunday when we come, it's even double. Lift up your hands and begin to thank the Lord. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you in thought, in word, and in deed. But I heard today that you rose up from the grave. You paid the price for my sin. 
you redeemed me and restored me back into fellowship with you as Adam and Eve originally were in fellowship. Now, Lord, begin a new work in my life. Come on, if you believe that, if you pray that, come on and put those hands together. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah! Glory! Devil, you are a liar. You came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But we declare today that because of the resurrection of Christ, he has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Come on and give God some praise. 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 Glory, hallelujah. Oh God, we say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for your obedience. That you lay down your life. Your life, which was one with God, you laid it down to come to this universe to die for a soul, a wretched soul like Pastor Richard. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And whisper something into the Lord. What you're whispering is what you want God to do in your life. Come on, come on. What you're whispering is what you want God to do in your life. Come on, what you're whispering is what, what you want God to do in your life. Lord, I'm depressed. Take away depression from me. I don't need to lay hands on you because the Spirit is already at work. It is my prayer. That when we walk out of this place today, you would have no yo-yo lives anymore. That you will get to an equilibrium in your work with God. Where you will pray a little bit more. You will study the word of God a little more. You'll be a little kinder. Come on, somebody. Amen. When the devil comes against you and throws a curveball at you, you will look right in his face like Job did and say, you know what? I know that my redeemer liveth. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. So take your medicine if you need it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still talk to people if you need it. Yes. But I believe when I was coming to here today that I was requested, that I was going to ask God that everybody will walk out of this service with joy in their hearts. Yes. I didn't tell you you're not going to have some of the issues you brought, but I'm saying that you're going to have resurrection joy. You're going to walk out of this place. I didn't promise you a new car. But I'm saying you're going to have resurrection joy. I didn't promise you happiness. Happiness is happiness, right? They come and they go. But joy is eternal. But everybody who has joy has happiness. But you can have happiness and not have joy. Because joy is a fruit of the spirit. Happiness sometimes is what the world gives. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Pastor Barbara, you have something to say? Just, just come up here and say, say no. yeah, come on, come on, come on. Because, come on, I know you have something to say. I know, I know you do. I know you do. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, she, she, she's not as long-winded as I am. Amen. 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 We're going to receive our offering in a minute. But whatever she has to say, I'll let her say right now. Praise just God. God is good. Mm. We should have all received mm. everything that God mm. had for us. Mm. Because literally... The Spirit of God has come in here today, and he has elevated us to where God wants us to be. I don't care what you're going through. It's already done. All you have to do is believe. Open up your heart and believe. Believe that God has already made a way for you. It's already done. It's already done, Karan. It's already done, my brother. It's already done, my sister. It's already done. All you have to do is say yes. Yes. Say yes. A simple three-letter word. Y-E-S. Yes. Yes. 
I do have something, something to say, Pastor, that the Lord led. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Tomorrow in the Jewish calendar, it's a new year. God always impress upon my heart before there's a new year to give a sacrificial offering. This is not a range. You don't have to do it. Remember, whenever I tell you to give, you don't ever have to do it. But if you believe God, and I promise you, God told me to sow a sacrificial seed today. He did. I have it. You know I don't have a problem with giving. But God tests our hearts sometimes, saints. He gave. He gave his best. He gave his all. If you, you're going to be blessed anyway. But if you want God to move in your life like he never has, I challenge you to give a sacrificial seed today. You know, that money you may have been going to buy your dinner with or just whatever, sow it. I promise you, I promise you, God is going to do something for you that's never been done. You bless. If you never give a dime, you are blessed. We just heard that we've been redeemed. We're in the kingdom of God. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do except receive God. I don't play with God. You know I don't. God told me to sow a sacrificial seed. If you want to join in and do so, you can and be a part of it. If you don't, you're still blessed. You don't have to give anything you don't want to. But if you believe the God that I serve, Watch what he do for you. Just, that's, come on. That's your choice. Yes, yes, come on. God just come on. Give God's name tie, some tie, praise. Tie, tie, in into, tie in into the word that came from Pastor Barbara. Listen, some of you might say, Pastor Barbara, I'm not as, I'm not as sensitive to the spirit as, as, as you are. You're talking to Pastor Barbara. But next week, amen. Next week, I'm bringing my sacrificial love offering. Whatever you bring, right on this sacrificial love. Amen? Amen. Offering. Amen? Amen? In fact, Pastor Barbara, I just saw into what you just said. I extend it to the year, to the end of the month. Okay. I extend it to the end of the month. Okay. Amen? But we're tying it into what? Your obedience. Amen? Amen. And believe God. Some, some of us need a whole month. Okay. Some, some just needs a day. Amen? Whatever but we're just going to do that. We're going to take only one offering, but there are going to be two baskets. It's all for the church. Amen? And so please uh, make sure that whatever you're putting in, it's, uh, I'm not a guest preacher, amen? So whatever you put it in, amen, is for the church. Uh, let's pass those around very quickly. Come on. Come on, let's do that very quickly. The tide, those of you who are visiting from Fresh Fire, we thank God for you because I know the dinner is at 2.30, amen? Those of you who are paid, those of you who have tickets, those of you who have your $50, I said if you bring your 50, we will give 25 so you can make it, amen? Praise God for the dinner. For our parts of world. Amen. Praise God. Let us all please rise on our feet. We're going to give our benediction in a minute. Uh, for all those who wrote down their names when we met with the district ministry commission that you want to go through licensing and possible ordination, could you please meet with me right in the meeting room? Uh, uh, sister. Sister. Kathy. I want you to be there too. All those who wrote their names down that want to be licensed, want to go through maybe possible ordination. Remember, I said license and ordination with the district. Please meet with me right in the room immediately after church. I promise you I wouldn't keep you too long. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Praise God. Thank you all. Let us all please rise on our feet. Amen. And we're going to receive our benediction. Again, we wish you all a blessed resurrection Sunday. A German town, every Sunday is a resurrection Sunday, but today is double. We thank God for all our guests. Uh, Brother Andrew, I think you said your who was here visiting with you, your your godmother, your mother, I mean, your mother, your grandma. Amen. Praise God. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We know that we will see you again one of these days. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God. Again, thank you all for coming. We thank God for our musicians. Elijah, it's good to see you. Let's lift up our right hands. Father, we thank you for 
these uh, offerings that your people, some have given sacrificially, some were able to give, some were not able to give. But God, we pray, amen, that you bless us all in the name of Jesus. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power now and forevermore. And may the love of God, the peace that Jesus Christ alone giveth, the fellowship and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rule, rest, abide in you till such time that God brings you together again. And let the people of God say, Amen. let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. let all those who are sanctified in the Lord say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Again, I'm going to ask those who wrote down their names uh, for the licensing and ordination, please meet with me in this room for just about five to eight minutes. Amen. Praise God. Mm-hmm.